Now I said that we could also go the other way. Going the other way means taking something like this. 14 over 20. I want to know, can I make this a fraction that is over 10? Can I make that denominator smaller? Yes. I can. Because you notice how I multiply times 1 and that didn't change anything? You know what else you can do? You can divide by 1. Think about this. If I have 14 over 20 and I divide this guy by 1, Dividing by 1 is nice because you just get the number you started with, which would be 14 over 20. Do you all agree? Yes. But what if I divide by a form of 1, meaning, say, 2 divided by 2? What's 2 over 2? <laughs> 2 over 2 is 1. So jumping ahead to the answer, you would see that 14 divided by 2 is 7. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So the answer here would be 7 over 10. Yes? So you can multiply times 1, or you can do what? You can divide by 1. If I have 55 over 100, Can you make this into a fraction over 20? What would you have done to turn the 100 into a 20? You would have divided by what number? Four. No. Five. You would have divided by 5. Now you can't just divide that by 5. But if you divide by 5 over 5, what's 5 over 5? 5 over 5 is 1. So I'm dividing by 1. That doesn't change anything. So what's 55 divided by 5? 11. And this right here is one of the reasons I have a hard time writing checks. Because if you write a check and it's, oh, 55 cents, I have a hard time not turning that into 11 over 20. That's just, especially if it's 25 over 100. Right, if you have 25 over 100. You can make that into something over 4, right? How do you go from a 100 to a 4? You divide by 25. So what's that numerator when you convert it? Isn't that just a 1? Mm -hmm. And you know this, because if you have 25 one hundredths, that's 25 cents, right? 25 pennies is what? It's a quarter. But I don't think that the banks would appreciate my simplification of the check. They get kind of weird about stuff like that. What if I have 12 over 30? Now, I'm going to let you choose. There are a lot of different fractions that are equivalent to this that you could reduce this to, and you make it, you know, make different. Now, what we want to do is to find what we call a fraction in lowest terms. And lowest terms means that these guys don't have any factors in common anymore. Remember, a factor is a number that could go into a number that's part of the product. What's the largest number that goes into both of these guys? Six. So you say six. So you're saying that I could take 12 over 30 and divide this by 6 over 6, right? What's 6 divided by 6? One. one. Oh. 6 divided by 6 is 1. I, want, I just want to emphasize that what we're dividing by is 1, right? So, okay, now going back to that, 12 divided by 6 is? 2. And 30 divided by 6 is what? Five. <coughs> Excuse me. Is there a number that could go into both 2 and 5 other than 1? No. So what you've done here is that you've reduced this fraction. You've reduced 12 over 30 into its simplest terms, which is 2 fifths. Now, suppose you didn't see this. Suppose you said, you know what? 
I know that both of these numbers are even. You did it by 2. Okay, so since both of these guys are even, you could reduce this by 2. Now, notice what I'm doing. Am I dividing by 2? No, I'm dividing by what? I'm dividing by 1. I'm dividing by a form of 1. Please understand this so you don't make me yell at you later on. Dividing by 2 over 2 is no problem. If I were to divide your age by 2 over 2, I'm dividing your age by 1. It doesn't change anything. I know some of you ladies out there are going, I can be younger. No. Nope. You can play the game where you, you're like, you're 29, you're celebrating your 13th, 29th birthday or something, but you're not fooling anybody. My mother-in-law did that. She was 49 for the longest until she... <coughs> She couldn't keep track of what it was anymore, so she just finally had to own up to her age. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. 30 divided by 2 is 15. But these guys also have something in common. And Dennis, you were saying they had what in common? They have a 3 in common. So I'm going to divide by 3, right? No. I'm not going to divide by 3. I'm dividing by 3 over 3, which is a form of 1. So 6 divided by 3 is what? 2 and 15 divided by 3 is 5. Do I still get the same answer? Yes. As long as you do things legitimately, you still get the same answer. Can we be happy about that? Now, I'm going to show you the different ways we have for simplifying these. And it's about changing our vision for the number so that we see it for what it really is.